Alright, time to take a small break from Toho and talk about something from Toho. So with the release of the Godzilla vs. Kong trailer finally out and the release date moving to March, I'm gonna bathe and cleanse my body with this trailer until the actual movie comes out because it's that good. I've decided to look back at the toys released back when we still had the exact same poster for months on end. And let me just say, Playmates did a better job at their figures than Jack's Pacific. Now I know what you might be saying. Spino, the Playmate figures look horrible. They copied the exact same molds from other Godzilla figures. And while that might be true, I wasn't talking about those figures. I was talking about the Godzilla vs. Kong line. Now what makes Playmates better? Well, let's take a look at both of them. So back before we had this, during the release of Godzilla King of the Monsters, we had these things. Three inch tall figure play sets consisting of one variant of Godzilla, another monster to accompany him, and a measly cardboard cutout of a background that you'd probably throw out sometime later. You had the option of choosing one of these three. Godzilla vs King Ghidorah in Boston, Godzilla with an atomic charge up in Rodan in Isla de Mona, and burning Godzilla with Mothra at her temple. Of course, me being me, I bought all three of them. If you're wondering what the heck is up with this setup, that's because I'm filming this all in my basement, which also explains the audio quality. It is freaking cold down here. So the articulation of these guys is simple. We have Godzilla here. Oh, crap. So at the neck we have a swivel here. We have a rot almost a rotation at the arm. Oh 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 uh that was unexpected. Let's hope this doesn't happen in Godzilla vs. Kong. Oh boy. Anyway, we have uh, the same joint here at the leg and swivel at the tail and also here at the tip. Uh, you, well, it's not really the tip, but you get what I mean. The Rodan figure has just a swivel at the head and two hinge joints at the wings. He also can rotate. Okay, kind of rotate his leg, but you know what I mean. The King Yodora figure, which is freaking huge, has a hinge at the wings, swivel at each head, rotation at the leg, almost, and two swivels at the tails. And a little side note here, but each of the heads can pop off, but this one here, Kevin, likes to pop off a little too easily. And the Mothra figure just has two ball joints at her wings. There's no other point of articulation elsewhere other than just her wings. It would have been nice if he had an ab crunch or maybe some movable limbs. The other Godzillas just have the same points of articulation as the, as the main one here. Now as for other figures, we had two 6 inch figures of Rodan and King Yudora which came with destroyable buildings in either a helicopter or an Ozprime or something, I don't know. We also got this big bad boy right here this 12 inch tall Godzilla but do you want to know why I have a problem with these so if I can I already showed you guys the articulation for this guy right the smaller Godzilla that you can buy well let me show you the articulation for this there's a swivel here swivel here at the tail rotation almost at the leg you know it's not you know a really good view of it but you know it, can kind of make it out and right here and there's no articulation that wait yeah there's no articulation here at the neck you know what this means this is just an upscaled version of this that's all it is all of those figures are just upscales in fact in points of articulation they're practically the same not to mention that there isn't any variants for the Godzilla figure too no atomic charge up and no burning mode plus the burning Godzilla that we got isn't even screen accurate although then again this might have been made before the film was actually finished and you thought the remolds that playmates made were bad well look at this this is a 24 inch Godzilla figure that was also released it's the exact same figure repackaged from the 2014 toy line. Great. I wonder if a kid got one and noticed that the dorsal plates on his figure were different. He'll ask, why does my Godzilla look slightly different from the other ones? Well kid, you should have read the freaking manga. Crap man, I never would have thought that Godzilla would actually lose his dorsal plates. Now this is where playmates shine. Let's focus on the Godzilla vs Kong line and not the remolds. So far we had two 6 inch Godzillas. One with a radio tower for some reason and one with an atomic breath piece. Notes, I chose
chose the one with the radio tower because I wasn't a fan of the design of the other one. They're the same figure at the end of the day with some slight differences. Transparent dorsal plates are cool, but I'd rather have them slightly transparent, like near the tips of them. Although if I am being honest, the SH Monster Arts 2019 poster version did a way better job at it. But that's SH, of course it had to be good, and it is. Also while recording this, SH Monster Arts just announced new figures for Godzilla vs Kong, and they look great. We've got Kong with an axe with a dorsal plate at the end of it, acting like the blade, which could have belonged to Dagon, a member of Godzilla's species that was the corpse seen back in 2014, or Godzilla's actual dorsal plate itself. And a new looking skull crawler with some new monarch vehicle called a Hev. They did also release two 11 inch figures of Godzilla and Kong that are slightly different from their 6 inch counterparts, and we'll get to why later on. So I bought the Godzilla figure first, followed by the skull crawler, and I only bought the Kong figure if I could find the skull crawler figure as well, and I did. So the articulation of this figure is actually really great. So you got the usual rotation at the arm, and at the leg. But you want to know what this figure has that the other ones don't? <clears throat> the tail here is on a ball joint. I love it. <clears throat> because with Bandai figures, they either don't move at all, or they do, but they're very tight. It can only move a full 360. Here, it can move 360 and side to side. Has much better rate. <sighs> So anyway, this thing has a lot of range. It can move side to side, up and down, hold 360, etc. And you want to know what this thing has that Bandai also doesn't have? A hinge at the mouth. And there's a hole right here where you can stick an atomic breath piece in. Of course, this may be due to the fact that this is also a remold of the other figure, but that's besides the point. Now the skull crawler figure here is pretty straightforward. It has a hinge here, rotation at the base of the arm and bend at the elbow. If this is the leg, I'm sorry. And another ball joint at the base of the tail. And you want to know why this makes it the best skull crawler figure we have so far? Because the last skull crawler figure we had had a hinge joint at the jaw, and that was it. It's also something that's really fun to play around with. Now the Kong figure has the best articulation out of those three. It has a swivel at the head, rotation at the arm, a bend at the elbow, a bend at the leg, and at the knee, a rotation at that leg, and it has a rotation on both of its fists. There's even a little hole here for his axe. You don't really see this much kind of articulation outside of NECA or SH Monster Arts. You know, it's funny how me, a Godzilla fan, has a lot of nice things to say about Kong. Wouldn't you agree? D Man 1954. Now, what makes these figures different compared to their 11 inch counterparts is this. You see this outline right here? That's because it's the return of battle damage. This is something that we haven't had since 1998. See this? This is a baby Zilla. This also had battle damage. And I know what you might be saying Spino, didn't this rip off from Jurassic Park? Well, yeah. Just like everything else from the 1998 movie. It's so good. So for Kong's battle damage feature, it's at his shoulder. You just have to pry it out. Right here. But for the skull crawler, it's actually easier. You just pop it off from the back. As for whether or not this will appear in the movie, I'm not sure. This is more or less like a gimmick. And I like this gimmick. It worked for Jurassic Park and it definitely works for Godzilla. So with that all being said, why do I think Playmates is better than Jack Specific? After all, I've only been describing the figures to you and I have yet to explain what makes one line better than the other. Well, let's compare the prices of these figures. Now keep in mind, I'm only using the prices from their website, so they might have been different in other places. Who knows, maybe they were cheaper when I got them. So according to their website, the Jack Specific playset figures cost $9.99. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this. This could have easily gone for 7 bucks. Now, while I don't remember the price for this, the 2014 playset had much, much more. And depending on how much it cost, I think it would have been worth it. Plus, the 2014 line had their own individual playsets, which had much more to offer. So why weren't these figures individually packaged? What if I wanted just one monster and one Godzilla variant? This could have gone for at least two or three bucks. And the only way of getting one individually was on eBay or Amazon. On that note, I saw them individually packaged in a listing on eBay. However, despite 
despite their looks, I never saw them in stores, nor did I see them on Jack Specific's website. Also, 69 bucks? That's not nice at all. For all figures, 15 would have been a better price. The 6-inch figures, on the other hand, cost $14.99. Why would I want to pay 15 bucks for a figure that's just an upscale of the 3-inch version? So unless you want the larger figure with a few small buildings and aircraft, that's fine, but there's no other difference when it comes to the figure itself. It's just a larger version of the 3 inch figure. And you want to know what else? This is all we had. We didn't get a wave 2, presumably due to licensing reasons. Which sucks, because we could have had a lot more done with this. They could have used the newer titans that appeared in the movie, like Methuselah or Behemoth. Maybe include a playset that had Madison Russell or Dr. Zarazoa. Or maybe a playset based on Godzilla's underwater temple. But we didn't get any of that. Who do I have to slaughter to get an official Methuselah figure? Because Bandai hasn't touched any of the other titans yet. But do you want to know what a 6 inch Playmates figure costs? $9.84. That's cheaper than Jack specific 6 inch figures. Bandai figures, which is what they're similar to, cost way more than that, almost as much as a NECA figure. Sure, you can make the argument that they're less detailed, but you're getting a lot more for a lot less. With the Bandai figure, you get nothing but the figure itself. But with the Playmates figure, you get much more. You get an accessory, more posability, and a battle damage piece. Now, I'm not saying that Playmates is better than Bandai, far from it. I'm saying that you can get something similar to a Bandai figure all for less. And another thing about Playmates is that we're getting a wave 2. The next wave has a lot in store for us. We're getting a figure of the new Titan called Warbat. Remember during the leaks when it was called Nazuki? Yeah, me neither. We're getting a new Godzilla that shoots out an atomic breath piece and a cog with a movable fist. We're getting a figure called Mega Godzilla with some equipment on his back, which is another thing Trend Masters did in the past. And the best toy leak of them all is that we're getting freaking Mecha Godzilla. He was even shown briefly in the trailer. Oh heck yes, I'm gonna buy that. Maybe this guy made him, I don't know. So all in all, I found the Jack Specifics toy line to be disappointing and lackluster, with a few number of figures in the line that had subpar articulation, prices that didn't sit well, and having only one wave of figures which it could have had more. It had the potential to bring up more than it originally had, but ultimately failed to do so, probably due to licensing. Whereas Playmates has cheaper but pretty good figures on the Godzilla vs Kong line, with better articulation, better pricing, and another wave of figures to come. I'm pretty excited to see where this goes. And as for the movie itself, I just hope Godzilla wins. But I'll make it fair for the Kong side, at least have Godzilla's victory be Purek. Like the guy won, but at what cost? And I hope that Mechagodzilla's inclusion will be spectacular, you know, jazz reveal and all. And that wraps up for me. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys like and subscribe. And remember, reject monkey, embrace lizard.